Welcome back to the channel. I'm David Mazay. This is Mazay Formula. And today I've got a new topic for you guys. I want to talk about voltage, the importance of minimizing voltage drop on your chassis and how it can affect your fuel pumps, your fans, your water pumps, and all kinds of accessories, how it can affect your tune and the overall experience uh, in driving your car. So let's get started. First of all, let's kind of look at the electronics in this car, the primary parts of the system. Now you can see back here, I've pulled the wing back. It slides back on these stands. It has some lock nuts back here. And we pull the wing back so we can open the hatch. And we've got these little push buttons that we can pop right here. So we'll pop the first one. And we'll walk around and pop the second one. And then we can open the hatch and take a look at what we've got. We have a hatch mounted battery that sits here in the trunk. And this little blue box right here is an external regulator, which is one of the major pieces of this puzzle. And this right here is our voltage adjustment dash pot. So by turning this, this dash pot right here, we can increase and decrease the voltage to the entire system on the vehicle. So if we want to run 15 volts throughout the entire system, we can turn the knob down to 15 volts. If we want to run 18 volts, we can turn it up to 18 volts. Okay, and so we've got eight ignition coils up here that power the ignition. We've got the alternator. We've got two pretty beefy fans that run up front here. I believe they're 12 inches each. And just an assortment of things. You know, we've got eight injectors that we have to power. We've got the ECU. We've got a fan behind the seat here for one of the heat exchangers for the water intercooler system. We have the methanol water injection pump, which is right here. Okay, and then of course we got all of our gauges and the race pack. Those don't draw a lot of juice, but something you have to take into consideration. And of course we have the blinkers and the lights, you know, and the headlights, the driving lights. And then we've got this little tank right here, which is the water to intercooler system reservoir, which contains a pump as well. It's a rule 2000. And then of course we have the Walbro pump that's inside the tank which powers the, uh, the fuel. It's the primer pump that we went over in a video before. All right, guys. So listen, I'm not an engineer. I'm just a hobbyist. But I hope that my explanation of things might make things a little bit more clear for those that are trying to build cars or get into cars. And this is my take on some things. So if I'm wrong, please correct me. I'm always open to feedback and insight from everyone else. So let's talk about the primary thing here that I spoke at the beginning of the video, voltage drop. So in a DC system, direct current, voltage drop is a real issue because direct current, 12 volts on typical automotive vehicles, it starts to drop voltage when you go long distances, depending on the size of the wiring. And there's actually charts that you can look at the different size gauges of wires and how much current you can send a certain distance and what the voltage will start out as and what it ends up being at the end. So if you're trying to power your starter on an RX-7, 
and you've got an, a battery relocated to the trunk. This is something that I see real common. Um, people will get a battery that's like one of these little tiny, you know, marine style batteries or like a motorcycle style battery or even they'll have a stock battery and they'll put it in the trunk right and that's great because it saves some spacers a lot of people will put it inside the storage bin and they'll use like a two gauge or a four gauge wire and they'll send that down to their starter in their alternator and then they wonder why the car has a hard time hot starting yes a lot of times hot starting is because your compression is low but in so many cases, hot starting is an issue because when those wires get hot, they build up even more resistance than the resistance they already have since they're already small to begin with, relatively speaking for the current you're trying to move. And you end up with a voltage drop that's significant. So if your battery's putting out 12.6 volts when the car's off, and you go and hit that button to the starter, and you're running a cable all the way from your hatch, all the way down to your starter, and it's only a four gauge wire, you're gonna end up with like 10 volts, or maybe 11 volts if you're lucky. And with the voltage being so low at the starter, when you hit the key, you're not gonna get the RPMs that you could possibly get out of that device, because that voltage drop, that device operating at 10 and a half or 11 volts, is nowhere near its capacity. And it cannot generate the RPMs that it could otherwise generate, had it been given the most voltage possible. So when you look at the components that are on the car that draw the most amperage, that require the most voltage and current, you're looking at things like the alternator fans and the starter and the fuel pump. These are super crucial components. And when you upgrade to like a Walbro 400 or Boss 044s, those babies draw a lot more amps than a factory fuel pump. You've got a pump that draws twice as much juice as a factory fuel pump. And so if it draws twice as much juice, you're going to have to give it a bigger wire and more line. If you don't give it a bigger size line, then you're going to incur a really big voltage drop by the time that juice gets from your battery or your alternator to that fuel pump. And you're going to end up re with reduced fuel pump output. It's something that I see all the time on the dyno on cars. People will come in with really killer fuel systems, and then they'll start getting in boost and getting under load, and the injectors are firing, and the ignition system is working really hard and the fuel pressure is looking good and as soon as they start getting up top the voltage starts to fall off and then what happens with that the fuel pressure starts to drop because the pump is not able to put out the energy that it's rated for and the flow that it's rated for because the voltage is falling and you can actually look at flow charts for these pumps and you can see how much it will flow at 13 14 volts with the alternator on versus flowing 12.6 volts with the alternator off And you can only imagine how much less it's flowing if you're getting a voltage drop under 12, right? So it's something that's very important, something that we really have to consider. So you have to have big wires, guys, if you do relocated batteries. And then if the battery is relocated, another thing you need to do is make sure that however big those power wires are, you also have adequate size ground. It's not sufficient enough to just ground your battery to the chassis in the trunk. You also need to run a ground directly to your engine block. This is something that Abel Ibarra taught me. We literally put this ground wire on the car right there on the ground on jack stands before we got on the dyno. largest power wire you can possibly find and the largest ground wire you can find and make sure that you not only ground to the chassis but that you also ground to the engine block itself look at this alternator right here this is actually built by a company around town you can see this little wire that comes out of the back here and this is the alternator field wire so I had this alternator taken apart and we modified it okay to where we disconnected the internal regulator on the alternator and we modified it to be externally regulated. Now the thing that's really interesting about that regulator and that battery, that battery is actually a seven cell battery, not just a six cell battery. So a standard battery is 12.6 volts when it's sitting there. This battery actually sits there at 14 to 15 volts. So when it's fully charged, it's like 14.9 to 15.0 volts. So, so you can see here with the car off and the water pump running and the lights on, we're sitting here at around 14.2 volts, which is a little bit unusual. A normal car would be sitting around 12.6. So now we'll come over here and we'll start the car. 
and you'll see the voltage pop up. guys so that concludes this episode i hope you guys learned a little bit about voltage drop and the importance of large wiring in your chassis to overcome the drop in a dc system upsizing your wire gauge sizes for components that draw excessive amperage and compared to stock componentry and also uh, how you could potentially upgrade your wiring system and be able to run a 17 volt output So I want to put this in at the end real quick. There's a really good friend of mine. I'm not going to mention his name. He's going through a really hard time. And we work out together at the gym. He's got a really nice BMW. He's a big car enthusiast. Um, he's He's been like really motivational and ins inspiring to me. The, just the way he lives his life and how positive he is. But his dad is uh, not doing too well. Has been uh, dealing with cancer for a while. And today they found out he won't be able to talk anymore so uh, i just just want to put best wishes out there i just I, I feel like projecting as much positive energy we can um to his family would be a good thing and if you guys can you know make a wish for my friend hope that he gets through this he's been really strong up into this point and um it's really inspiring i just lost my grandfather about a month ago and uh he's taught me how to keep my head up and be strong, you know, and, and now he's going through the same kind of deal with his father. So, you know, life is short and everything's about just trying to do everything you can each day to be better and enjoy the time you have with the people that are around you and, and show them that you care. So thanks for watching the video and appreciate it.